So here we are, guys. We finished reviewing the DC anime movie universe, the Superman anime movies, the Batman anime movies, the Superman and Batman anime movie crossovers, the Justice League anime films, and now we're on the DC anime movie leftovers, where we're reviewing DC anime films that aren't Batman or Superman related. So the first one we're talking about is Wonder Woman 2009, and this was a really good movie. Like, I actually really enjoyed this, like... I didn't, well, actually, I did think it was going to be good. I was excited to see it, but I didn't think it was going to be this good. Like, this was actually really good. I was impressed by this movie, and I'm really shocked that there isn't that many Wonder Woman animated films. Like, there's only two of them. Like, there's this movie and Bloodlines, but Bloodlines was just god awful. This is just phenomenal. Like, I don't know what happened with Bloodlines, but they somehow fucked it up. But with this, they did a good job for the first ever Wonder Woman movie. So, yeah. So, the first thing I'm going to talk about is Ares' design. I kind of do not like Ares' design in this film. Because I'm used to the Ares' design, how he looks in Injustice 1. Because, to me, that's the definitive Ares' design. Like, I, I, have, I like Ares to look like more like he was scary looking. Rather than look like he's a normal person just with armor. Like, all that stuff. You know, I kind of would prefer more if he had more of, like, an actual armor. And he had, a like, a demon kind of face, because I like to think Ares is like a demon, like, he is the son of Zeus, but, you know, he's like evil, like, this is what he is, he's evil, he's the god of war, like, he's supposed to be more threatening, not look like how he does in this film, so yeah, he's kind of the only thing I did not really like about this film, so yeah, I don't really like Ares' design, everyone else's design is phenomenal, much better than anyone in Wonder Woman Bloodlines, most people's designs in Bloodlines were kind of bad, but everyone's design here is phenomenal. Like, I love Wonder Woman's design. She's gorgeous. Um, I love Steve Trevor's design. I love pretty much all the Amazon designs. Well, yeah, like I said, like, only Ares has the only bad design. Everyone else's design was phenomenal. So, yeah. And a funny thing is that about Steve Trevor when he first appears is that when he lands on the island... Um, he's a bit of a pervert, cause when he's walking around, like, in Themyscira, like, cause he doesn't know, like, cause he didn't meet Diana yet, he sees all these Amazons naked, like, they're laying down, they're, like, hanging out in the water, you know, what the wave and all that stuff. Like, basically, it's like an outside pool, basically, if you know what I mean. Not like an outside pool in your backyard, no. More like, it's like the water, like, there's a nice clean water, and there's a wave, and, like, you can swim in it, basically. He sees them, he's like, ooh la la, and I'm like, fucking pervert. But then, the Amazons catch up, catch up to him, and then we get to another scene where he is, um, cap not captured, because, well, he's tied up by the Amazons, and he says to Diana's mother that, your daughter has a nice wreck. Basically, he's referring to her ass. So, the funny thing about that is that he says it right in front of Diana's fucking mother. Like, you said it right in front of her mother. Like, you just said your daughter has... You just said to Diana's mother that her daughter has a nice ass. Right in front of her friends and her mother. Like, right in front of her fucking friends and family. <laughs> nice going, dude. <laughs> really, Steve. Like, geez, you fucking pervert. Jesus Christ, Steve. You already having like, a little bit of a boner for her? Oh, TMI. Why did I make up that joke? Uh, I'm dirty-minded when it comes to jokes. So, yeah, Steve's kind of a fucking pervert. And I kind of just gave away two of my topics, because... Basically, it's Steve Lee. Like, he's being a bit of a perv. Like, him just complimenting Diana's ass, like, really, dude? Like, right in front of her mother and family? Like, like Steve, really? Come on, Steve. <laughs> like, the first thing... Like, imagine if this is how everyone was like when they had met a girl they liked. When they'd be like, oh, ma'am, I think your daughter has a nice ass. Like, imagine if someone's saying that, and it's and their daughter hears that, but you're saying it to their mother, and their daughter's right there. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, what is wrong with you? Like, you should not do that. Like, what the fuck, Steve? You're just lucky Diana went, went, wanted to date you after. You're just lucky. Well, you're just lucky you end up being a thing at the end. So, yeah, Steve Charles doesn't die in this movie. And then that, when we get to the other thing, and that this is that actually take place in World War One. And mistake me if I'm wrong, but I believe in the original comics, when they first met, it took place in World War One, And this film, it takes place in the modern world. So basically, it's more of like, you know, New 52, except New 52 didn't happen yet since this came out in 2009. And New 52 happened around 2011 because of the Flashpoint story. So basically, it's more of the modern world. Like, 
I mean, that's fine, that's fine. I don't mind it because I actually did enjoy the story still. And there was actually one moment where Diana saw this little girl crying because these kids wouldn't let her play pirates with them because, you know. And Diana told them, told her, like, basically made her day and said, go play with them. Like, I like that moment. Like, I thought that moment was cute. And I like pretty much everything else about this film. And the funny thing about this one scene in, in the, like, I am, because with all the stuff that's in this film, I am kind of glad this took place in the modern world. And that's kind of what Bloodlines kind of wanted to do after. And notice how Bloodlines took place, te- was made, like, Bloodlines was made ten years after this film. And Bloodlines did a horrible job, while this film did a phenomenal job of everything. So, yeah. Basically, if you want, if you prefer more of Wonder Woman's story, me and Steve Trevor in the modern world instead of World War One, then this is your kind of Wonder Woman story. But for me, I prefer the definitive version because the first time I ever heard of, well, learned about Wonder Woman's origin story was the Wonder Woman movie, the live action one, which is still good in my opinion. And if you ask me, I say this comes with just as good as Wonder Woman, a live action Wonder Woman film. Like, if you ask me how I rank the Wonder Woman movies, it'd be Bloodlines, 84, this movie, and the first one. Like, I like these, I like, I pretty much say only two Wonder Woman movies are good. 1984 is okay. Bloodlines are just kind of awful. So, yeah. I, I, I kind of don't like that's in the modern world, but I still think it's a good movie. Like, I don't mind that, like, because I did like the animation and everything. So, yeah, it doesn't bother me as much as, like, maybe other people. Like, I still prefer the original story of World War One. Like, I like that with the Steve Trevor and Diana relationship, maybe because of the first movie. But I actually do, like, I actually don't mind it. I don't mind this at all, but I still prefer the definitive version, like I said. So, yeah. And let's go back to Ares, because I'm talking about his voice actor. Ares is none other than voiced by Alfred, Mol- Alfred Molana. Molana? Alfred Molana? I can't pronounce his last name. I'm sorry if I butchered your last name. Basically, he's vo- he, his voice is by Dr. Octopus in Spider-Man 2. So, yeah, Dr. Octopus is Ares in this movie. So, yeah, Dr. Octopus is Ares in this movie. So, we got another Marvel ca- actor voicing, basically, you know... A DC character. Like, we got Josh Keen voice, The Flash, and Cries on Two Herbs. And now we have Dr. Octopus voicing um, Ares in Wonder Woman 2009. So, yeah, that's pretty cool if you ask me. Like, that was awesome. Like, he actually does a good job. But he's not my favorite Ares voice actor. I prefer the Ares voice actor in the Injustice game, the first one. Because, you know, to me, that's, like, the voice of Ares. Because I always like to have Ares be more of a threat. Like, he actually sounds terrifying. Because, again, he's supposed to be the god of war. I think he's supposed to be... A threat, not look ridiculous. I think maybe because it was Ares' design that threw me off. So, yeah. He still does a decent job as Ares. So, yeah. And now we get to the final battle. And the final battle is pretty good, but the main thing I want to talk about the final battle is the final scene in the final battle is that one woman kills Ares. Basically, it goes back to the beginning, like the fight scene before Diana was born, where um Diana's mother um kills her son, basically, because her son was Ares' son. And Ares like, don't, don't do it. But she does it anyway, so, because Ares was evil. He's the god of war. So, one woman does the same thing to Ares years later. Because, like, Ares is all tied up by the last of truth. And he's, and when one was about to decapitate him, like, Ares cries out for Zeus, Zeus. But he doesn't come, and she decapitates him, and Ares dies. And that was a really cool death. Like, that was a badass death. Like, I wish you would love to see that in the movie. But sadly, Ares died in the first Wonder Woman movie, but I'm fine with Ares' death in the first live-action Wonder Woman movie, because it actually felt satisfying that he died, because it feels like if he didn't die in Wonder Woman 1, it wouldn't have worked, but yeah, it's better off he just died, and that's kind of what Wonder Woman 1984 failed to do, is that, like, you know, Cheetah's probably, like, an old lady by then, which will never become Cheetah again, which sucks, and speaking of Cheetah, she makes a cameo at the end, so yeah, that's cool, a Cheetah cameo, that's pretty cool, a Cheetah cameo. So yeah, the film ends with one woman fighting Cheetah. Like that was that's cool. Like that's cool having her fight Cheetah at the end, and the film ends. So yeah, that's basically one woman two thousand nine, and I'd say this is a really good film. So for my conclusion, I'm giving Wonder Woman two thousand nine a nine out of ten. This is a very good Wonder Woman movie, and I highly recommend you watch it. So yeah, nine out of ten, and I'll see you guys later when I review Green Lantern: First Flight.